All right, I know that Moto Man has talked to you about driving impressions on the all new Cadillac ATS-V. But today I'm here to take you through some of the technical details and what are the ingredients that give the performance that, you, that he's experienced. At the heart of every ATS-V is the all new Cadillac LF4 twin turbo V6 engine. It's 3.6 liters, it's 464 horsepower, 445 pound-feet of torque. It is so responsive, there is zero turbo lag. Now, you might ask, how do we get to zero turbo lag? We start with reducing the mass of the rotating components. Let's come around the side here and I'll point out a few. Inside each turbine is a turbine vane. And we went ahead and we came up with a composite material that is aluminide titanium. It's got 51% of the rotating inertia of a typical aluminum uh, turbine. And what that does is it allows us to spin it up faster. Second, in the rotating inertia space, we went to titanium connecting rods. This is the lightest weight material known to man that is durable in this space. So we have titanium connecting rods, reducing their mass substantially. The other thing that we did to get the immediate response and to eliminate any sense of turbo lag is we went ahead and we sh shortened the compressed air path between the turbine and the throttle body. You know, air is like a spring. Consider it like a slinky. If you had a very long slinky and you pushed on one end, you wouldn't get a lot of immediate reaction at the other end. If you had a very short spring or a short slinky and you pushed on one end, the other end would respond very quickly. That's exactly what you have here with this turbocharger in the way it's compressing the air. And so we have roughly 12 inches and that shorter compressed air path translates into immediate response when you hit the throttle. One last element on the engine. This engine at peak boost operates at 18 PSI. Let's transition over to transmission. The transmission, the primary transmission in this vehicle is the all new General Motors 8-speed, the 8L90. This has a seven to one overall gear ratio from first gear to eighth, translated into three to 4% improvement in fuel economy. And we couple that with the very fast response time. Now, how do we get the fast response time? We get the fast response time with new electronic controls that are working directly with the engine, and we don't have to do the computation in series. They're being done simultaneously. We have a 258 millimeter torque converter, which also is more efficient. And this transmission is 12 and a half kilograms or 27 pounds lighter than the six speed it replaces. You know what, I know from Moto Man, there are certain guys like him, you know, stuck in the past that uh, insist on having a manual. Well, just for him, we designed in a six speed manual. This six speed manual though is just no ordinary manual. We have a new characteristic called no lift shift. This is a feature where you can maintain peak boost in the engine by leaving your right foot planted and making those shifts as quick as you want. Now you still need to use the clutch, but you don't need to back off the throttle. And it is a fantastic experience once you get used to that. You gotta retrain your brain so that uh, it, uh, you, you don't uh, not use the clutch. And he'll be able to get it sooner or later. One of the other ingredients that gives us a little bit of magical difference in our integration performance is what we call our electronic limited slip rear differential. This is a, a standard differential, but what we have done is we have a electronic applied clutch pack that is immersed in transmission fluid. And we have two separate circuits. You got your standard circuit for your rear differential to uh, go ahead and lubricate your pinion. But we also have an electronically applied clutch set that enables us to take the torque bias ratio of a standard limited slip differential and expand that. So we got probably 40 to 50% more capability in terms of the uh, torque bias ratio that we've got. And what that does is that gives us fantastic high speed stability. As you're going through the S's very quickly, 
we're able to keep uh, full torque on both inside and outside wheel appropriately as we see the weight transfer. It translates into faster exits in the corners as well as improved yaw stability. And so one of the things we've done is we have used the pump that's in the transmission and we actually pump the transmission fluid from the front of the car back into this rear differential, cools the differential, and then we take it up to the front of the car into the transmission oil cooler and cool that fluid, bring it back to the trans, and then send it back. It's a very efficient way of cooling the rear differential with a system that's already in place. We just had to add a little bit extra line and we get the job done uh, basically for free. Okay, remember when we were in Santa Barbara and we talked about the CTS V Sport? Well, we've got a similar display here. What we have is we have the uh, all new ATS V up on its side so you can see the engineering and the technical detail that went into uh, enabling this fantastic performance. You know, when you have 464 horsepower, it generates lots of heat. You have to cool it, otherwise it creates a problem. How did we do that? Well, the way we did it is we took every square millimeter of that space behind these large lower and upper grills, as well as the outer grills, and we put heat exchangers behind them. We have three heat exchangers that are required to cool these turbos. We have another heat exchanger that we use for the transmission oil cooler and for the rear differential cooler. And the air management on this was critical. You want the air to come into the front of the car, you want it to exit over the top through the extraction in the hood, and then also carefully through the bottom so you don't generate too much front lift. As you look at this, we have the transmission oil cooler that's actually laying down on the horizontal behind the front grill and the air comes into the front, exits through the heat exchanger, and then very carefully is ducted through this valence panel on the bottom side. And we have to split it, so some of the air comes out the bottom, some of it comes through this duct, so we get smooth laminar flow. We also have brake ducts that are uh, very, very beneficial here, keeping these brakes cool so that you can stop at 189 miles an hour repeatedly without fade. Air enters in the front through the center lower grill. We have a brake duct that comes through the wheelhouse, and then we have deflectors that we actually mount to the suspension that direct the air right at the rotor. This keeps those rotors cool for that peak braking. Another critical element in the overall steering performance of the car is the structural shear panel that we designed specifically for the V-Series. It's not on any of the other cars. It's actually a two-piece panel that is roughly 25 millimeters thick and it goes from the front cradle to the rear cradle to the body and it ties the whole front structure together. This in combination with a couple of other critical braces that we have increased the front torsional stiffness between 25 and 30 percent. And what that means is, is that when you have the very large footprints that we have with these tires, it generates such lateral load that you need this kind of stiffness and it gives you that very precise steering. Another enabler for the very precise steering is what we did to the bushings in the suspension. Every one of the handling links that's a lateral link such as this one here, we took the elastomeric inner joints and we replaced them with what we call cross-axis ball joints. These are very precise metal to metal joints that have lubrication in them but zero compliance. That gives you that very precise steering when you make those small maneuvers on center. We also increase the rates on the remaining rubber bushings 25 to 50 percent so that we have the integrity in the feel that you want in a high performance sedan. Whenever you have this kind of torque with these kind of tires, you have the risk of power hop. And we know how to solve this issue and it's completely absent with the new ATS-V. And a couple of the things that we had to do to make sure that we were power hop free is that we had to improve the stiffness of the prop shaft. We have a larger diameter prop shaft that is extremely stiff, but that wasn't enough. We went ahead and we decided that to go ahead and keep this from hopping, it actually takes asymmetric stiffness between one tire patch and the other so that these two are decoupled. And the way that we did it is we use a 55 millimeter diameter half shaft 
on the driver's side of the vehicle and a 30 millimeter half shaft on the passenger side of the vehicle. That, in combination with the prop shaft, enables us to have a zero power hop vehicle. Now, you could also solve this by dialing out torque. That's not the approach that we wanted to use. We knew Moto Man wouldn't be happy with that. You can see here the electronic limited slip from the bottom side. I showed you the display earlier. This is where it's located and it has its own unique controller mounted on the back of the differential so that we have instantaneous control. Let's talk about fuel systems for a minute. All right? When we started out, we thought we would start with a standard ATS fuel tank. Problem is, is that when you get a vehicle that's capable of 1.03 G's maximum lateral acceleration, standard fuel tank isn't going to work. We had to go ahead and do extensive work with fluid dynamics and baffling to go ahead and be able to get all the fuel out of the tank. The standard tank in this configuration on an ATSV would only allow us to get to about 3 eighths of a tank, otherwise we'd get starvation when we started doing heavy cornering. Through all the computational fluid dynamics and work that we did, we're now able to get down to within a half a gallon so we can get 15.5 usable gallons of fuel on the track with the baffling that we've done. We took it from 3 eighths of a tank down to a half a gallon only remaining and you can still do those heavy G maneuvers. If you get below a half a gallon, you need to be going straight and taking it steady so that you don't run out. Moto Man's going to tell you how flat this car is on the track. Well, one of the reasons that it's so flat is that we went ahead and we increased the stiffness of the coil springs by roughly 50% as well as the roll rates. And that is done by increasing stabilizer by diameter. Doing so, this car corners flatter than anything we've done before. You know, high performance cars have a unique sound signature. They want to let the driver as well as others know around them that this is something special. One of the ways that we do that is that we have valve mufflers on the ATSV. There's a valve that's electronically controlled that opens up and allows the muffler to be basically a flow-through muffler with very, very little back pressure. And it's got that very powerful sound of authority that you hear when you hit the throttle. There's three modes inside the car, tour, sport, and track. As you move from tour to sport to track, you spend more time with those valves open, creating that Cadillac ATSV sound that we want you and anybody with insight to hear. Okay. Let's talk about brakes. We have Brembo six piston brakes up front with a 370 millimeter diameter two piece rotor. We have six piston front calipers. We have two pistons at 38 millimeters, two at 34, and two at 30 millimeters. This enables us to get maximum braking performance out of these rotors. We have an aluminum center hat that's mechanically fastened to the nodular iron uh, outside rotors. In the rear, we have Brembo brakes also. We have 339 millimeter diameter by 26 millimeter thick rotors back here. And these are four piston Brembo rear calipers. Many of these high performance vehicles only use Brembos in the front. On the ATSV, we use them at all four corners. All right, let's go talk tires. What we have on the ATSV are Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires that were specifically designed for this ATSV. What we have is tires that were designed using racing technology. We use the same compound that Michelin developed for the Formula One cars. We actually have three different compounds. As you look at a cross section of the tire, we have the hardest compound on the outside shoulder, which is there to generate uh, maximum uh, wear resistance. One of the parts of a tire that wears out most quickly is the outside sh shoulder during heavy cornering. We have a very hard compound here. We also have the, the two uh, inner ribs, okay, are of a softer compound and these are the Racing R compound, and these are designed for um, maximum grip and steering response. And then on the inside shoulder, we have a third compound that's used for uh, wet traction. So these two ribs for wet traction, 
these two for steering response, this for outside wear. Three compounds across the base of this tire. The tires are uh, capable of even more in case we decide to dial it up a little bit. Let's talk about the exterior. Everything you see on the outside of the ATSV had to earn its way or it didn't get there. It either had to improve the cooling performance, it had to improve the aero performance, or it had to increase downforce, allowing us to keep this car stable at top speed. So as you look at the front of the car, between the upper and lower grill area, 50% more area than the standard car. We very carefully manage the airflow through the front of the car, cooling the engine, and then we also carefully extract the air through the hood and allow it to flow over the hood for smooth laminar flow. This helps reduce downforce, cool the engine, and it also gets you a chance to look at this beautiful carbon fiber book matched extractor like you'd expect on a Cadillac. I might also point out every ATSV has a 100% carbon fiber hood. We have gurney lips that are on the carbon fiber package that help manage airflow across the front of the car, keep it away from the rotating tire, and then it allows the air to join as it flows across the back of the car. Specific rocker treatments are there for improved aero. We have a rear spoiler that's 30 millimeters taller on the track pack than the standard car, improving our downforce. And then last, at the tail, we also have more beautifully exposed carbon fiber for the rear diffuser. And this also helps us manage the air around the rear of the car, exiting quickly, smoothly, and reducing drag. On top of that, it looks awesome. Lastly, I want to talk about the seats. These seats we designed specifically with Recaro. And these are 16-way adjustable seats that have pneumatic bladders in the cushion in back and in the lumbar area. We have adjustable side bolsters and there's a control that we can show you here on the side with a little paddle. You activate the control and it comes up in the integrated center stack a display of what seat feature you're adjusting. Very simply displayed, very easy to understand. You then take the little wobble plate that's in the middle and you adjust your lumbar in and out, up, down, seat bolsters in and out and you basically custom fit that seat for you. We use micro suede trim that not only looks good and feels good and is cool to touch, it's there to keep you in position because it has higher friction. And then the complete back of the seat is wrapped in hard panel micro suede so that regardless of what seating position you are in in this car, you know you're sitting in a Cadillac. All right, well, you know, it's been fun talking to you today about the all new Cadillac ATSV, and we are interested in your comments, what you want to see in your next V series, whether it be the ATSV or the CTSV. Let us know, either through the comments below or through his social media, which I'm sure he's probably flashing on the screen right about now. And uh, don't think I don't know that he calls me the mad scientist. Uh, it's not really deserved, but uh, I'll, I'll deal with it. So anyways, let us know what you think, and maybe I can come back with uh, Moto Man and, uh, and talk about and uh, respond to some of your comments and questions. Thanks again, and uh, it's been fun. So here's the script. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch one of our 350 other episodes. And most importantly, share us with your friends. You're already wasting half your life on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Moto Man TV, all one word. I don't care who you share us with. Share us with your enemies. Just give the gift of Moto Man.